Hi, in this video I'd like to show you a neat way to display videos within a keynote presentation. This technique was inspired by a recent trend on the internet in web design which uses light boxes or what are called modal windows to display media. Uh, let me give you an example from a website here. Uh, this is a simple light box uh, plugin that you would use when building different websites. And the idea is this, instead of um, taking you to a new page every time you want to see an image or a video, uh, all you do is click on the, the image, a thumbnail of it, and it will bring it up in an overlaid window. It's called a light box. Uh, notice that the image is, is very clear. It stands out from the background because the background was dimmed a bit by the light box. Uh, I'm sure you've seen this before on many websites and of course is done on the internet with video quite a bit as well. Uh, and so I, I saw these on many different websites and I thought wouldn't that be a neat way to display some video within a keynote presentation. And so I tinkered around a little bit and I found some neat ways to accomplish this. And that's what I'd like to show you now. So let's go ahead and launch a keynote presentation. Uh, I have a new blank presentation here using the default white theme. And uh, let's get started. Uh, this particular presentation, I'll, I'll do some work with glaciers, just to have something very visual to show you this example with. So I'm going to start with my title slide before I even get to the light box. And the, the first slide, I'm going to go ahead and bring an image in. Uh, it's always nice to have as many full screen, high quality images as you can in your presentations. Uh, and remember to keep your, your uh, wording and your, your text to a minimum. Now, just to show you one other quick trick right here. This particular picture, you'll see it, it's a beautiful shot of, of the front edge of a glacier. And um, you'll notice it's, a, it's not the right aspect ratio for my slide. So I never want to leave white bars like this on the top and the bottom. It just looks unprofessional. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and drag my image so that it fits the slide size like this. And uh, so now you see I have a nice full screen image, but my image is getting cut off on the left and the right. Now, I could certainly just leave that the way it is, and the presentation will only show the central part. Um, but this is an opportunity here to do something kind of neat and add a little more interest to our presentation. So you know what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to drag the image so that it's aligned on one edge. It doesn't matter which edge, but I'm going to align it on one edge like this. And what I'm going to do is give it a build, give it an animation so that it gradually pans across upon launching the presentation. And again, this is just done to add some interest to the slideshow. So I'm going to select my image. I'm going to go into my animation menu up here and select actions. And we're going to add a move action. And you notice my image moves across the slide. Now I have to tweak it a little bit. I don't want it to move all the way across like this. I want it to move just enough to get to the other edge. I'm going to line it up with the other edge, just about there. Uh, I'll show you what I did. Okay, just move just a little bit, very subtle. Now that was uh, much too fast. We want this to be very slow and subtle and refined. So I'm going to give it about a four second animation. Uh, the other thing is, I, I want this to happen right upon launching the presentation. So I'm going to go into my order and make that animation occur right after the transition. Okay. Now, of course, I need a title. This is a title slide, and this will be about glaciers. So I'm going to go ahead and add a text box, text box and type in the title, glaciers. And of course, I'm not going to leave it in the default font and the default color. It doesn't show up at all. It has no impact, no visual appeal. So let me format this a little bit. I'm going to head up to my format menu. First thing I'm going to do is change the text color. I think white will actually look nice on this blue glacier background. And this is just far too small and too lightweight of a font to really stand out. So let me find something a little more interesting. I think I'm going to use, uh, let's go with Baybus New, very modern font. And that looks good. The only problem is it's way too small. So I'm going to jump my font size up by about 100. And there you have it. That looks pretty nice. Uh, the only concern I might have is it doesn't stand out against the background too much. So the last tweak I might make is to give the text a little bit of shadow. So I've selected my text box. I'm in my text menu here. I'm going to select the gear, go down to shadow, and you see my shadow popped up. And I want to tweak the shadow a little bit so it looks a little more subtle. I don't like having a really big offset. It's too dramatic. So I actually set my offset to zero, and I'm going to set my blur to just a little bit, maybe a five point blur. And that, that looks pretty good. It's subtle, but it allows you to read the text off the background pretty well. Uh, one more thing I need to do before I go on is I need to make my title build in 
to coincide with that animated background. So I selected my title box, select animate, and I want it to build in. And again, I'm going to be very subtle, very classy here, and just make it dissolve in uh, and make it a little slower. And I want to have it dissolve in with the previous build, but also with a little bit of a delay, maybe a three tenths of a second delay. And so there's my title slide, and I'll show you the result here by clicking the play button. And let's see what it looks like. And there's your animated background and your gradual title. Very nice, simple, clean, very elegant. Now that I have my title slide, it's time to work on this light box idea. So I'm going to go ahead and add a second slide. I'm just going to add the blank slide. I always like to use the blank slide. It, it lets you gives you the freedom to, to lay out the slide however you want. Now, I'm a big fan of full image backgrounds for our slides. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to go ahead and put in another nice, powerful glacier image. And this will be an image of a glacier calving, which means breaking off into the ocean. Uh, and you see a nice picture here. Again, I never want to leave this white space at the top and the bottom. It just looks unprofessional. So I'm going to go ahead and enlarge my image so that it covers the entirety of the slide. Now again, it is hanging off the edges. You can see it over here and over here, but I'm going to ignore that here. I don't want any motion on this slide. I want it simple. Uh, I want to really focus on the, the falling ice. Um, but I do want to add some text. And so let me go ahead and add a text box. And let's just define what this process of calving is, just as an example. So calving is the breaking off of the leading uh, edge of a glacier. Something simple like that. Now again, obviously I can't leave it like this. I can barely see it. It doesn't stand out. So first thing I'm going to do is make it white because the majority of my background is a dark color. So I'm going to go ahead and make my font white. Um, I'm going to use a different font. I could be consistent and use the Baybus again, but Baybus is really better for um, titles and headings. Um, this being a sentence, I want it to be a nice, easy to use font, but I do want it to coincide or, or work well with the previous font. I want to work well. So um, this is a very powerful sans serif font. I'm going to use a serif font that will support it. It's something as simple as even, um, let me go ahead and use Times New Roman. We'll see how that looks. Yeah, nice and simple and elegant. Now it does get a little bit lost as it goes over the middle here. So what I think I might do is experiment a little bit by making it a little bit of a smaller box, I'm going to make the font a little bit bigger. We always want to use as big of a text size as possible. Uh, maybe there. And I want to actually align it to the left. And I think what I'm going to do is slide my image over just a little bit. And then I could put my text up here. Maybe something like that. Now, I don't like that the word breaking and edge are over the white here, so I'm going to make this even a little bit smaller. Maybe right there in the middle. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And this is how I would approach a presentation. I'd really play around with placement, make thing, make sure everything is very legible and very clear, keep the text to a minimum. And I, I'm happy with this slide. I think it looks nice. Now, before I go any further, um, I do want to have a nice animation from the first slide to the second slide, but again, very subtle. Um, in this case, I don't want to do anything too flashy. I'm thinking a simple fade through color might be the best. So fading through black. It's a very subtle and it works nicely. Um, if I want to get fancy, I could have this text build in. I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm going to keep it nice and simple here. All right, and so I have my next slide. Now, here's where the light box comes into play. Uh, I want to display a quick video of a Calvin Glacier to really show or emphasize my point. Now, I could certainly just add a blank slide and add the video and be done with it. But I want to be a little more interesting here. So I'm actually going to take this second slide and I'm going to duplicate it by hitting Command D. And now I have a perfect copy of the two slides. On the second one, this is where my video is going to go. But before I bring my video in, I want my background to become darker so that I can really concentrate on the video clip. There's a variety of ways to do that. I think the easiest of which is to just add a rectangular shape covering the entire slide. Okay. And I'm going to change this shape to black in color. So I'm going to go into my style options, change the fill color to black. Okay. 
I'm going to get rid of the shadow. It doesn't need a shadow. And I'm going to make it somewhat opaque, or, or transparent rather. I want to make it somewhat transparent so that you can still see the, the background there, but it doesn't take away from the video. Maybe about a 75%, maybe a little less. I'll put it at about 70. And again, this is just a question of taste. Now what I can do is add the video right on top. So I'm going to go and grab my video clip. I have it saved on my desktop. And I'm going to go ahead and bring the video clip. And you notice the video clip is going to come right over the top. Now, of course, I want the video to be big, but I also want to really achieve this light box effect, which means I need to be able to get a glimpse of the background. So I want to leave some of the background intact. I do not want to fill the entire slide with the video. You kind of lose the effect. And I also want my video to really pop out from the background. So I'm going to give my video a shadow. I'm going to go into the style and select a drop shadow. And I want it to be a pretty bold shadow so it really is visible. So I'm going to make my offset 0, my opacity 100% because I really want to stand out, and my blur pretty significant, maybe about 25. And so you see around the edge of the video now, right around here, I have a nice subtle shadow that really makes it pop out from the background. Put it right in the middle, down a little bit, and there we have it. So this is the slide, this is the slide with the video. And then what I can do is go back to my initial slide and copy it, Command C, and then paste it after the video. So it goes slide, slide with video, slide. And now to transition between them, I'm going to use a simple dissolve effect. So I'm going to go back to my second slide, and I want to animate it with a dissolve. Okay maybe about a second, let's go about eight tenths of a second. And then to get back from the third slide to the fourth slide, I'm going to give that a dissolve as well. Same amount of time, just for consistency sake. Okay. Now one last tweak I have to make. I want to make sure that this video plays automatically. I don't want to have to give an extra click to start the video. So when I go to my animations, it by default gives you this, this click to start video to start movie and I want to change that to nothing. I want this movie to start automatically and to make sure I'm going to select it and go to format and go to movie and I want to say I want to make sure that this is the start movie on click is not selected because I want to start automatically. And so there we have our slideshow and so I'm going to show you the final product right now. So I'm going back to my initial slide and I'm going to hit play. All right, so here we see my subtle animation in my title slide. And then I'm going to head to my second slide. Nice fade through black. I have a definition. And now I'm going to dissolve to my video. And the video should auto play. It's a little bit slow here, but there's the auto play. And then I can dissolve away from the video. And we can go to back to our original slide. And so it gives you a nice little effect. Uh, it's kind of neat. You could really experiment with it. Uh, you can use it for just photos, um, even for text, all sorts of different things. But it creates a nice, polished, modern effect for your slideshow. Hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.